Welcome to the Fantasy Source Blitz Podcast. My name is David A. Arnott, sitting here with Bill Bender. And the topic du jour of the past week has been the NFC East on Fantasy Source Football. Previews going up. Uh, what do you see as one of the, the main storylines going into this season? I mean, like, everyone seems to be preoccupied with Albert Hainsworth not being able to pass a conditioning test. But, I mean, there, I think that there's something more important going on with the Redskins. Absolutely. And you look at it, it's Mike Shanahan's first year there. Uh, he had a track record in Denver we were just talking about before we come on. Uh, nine years out of the 14 years he was there, they ranked in the top ten in offense. But what Mike Shanahan's going to find in Washington is a mess. I know they got Donovan McNabb. I know he has a track record as a decent quarterback, but they just don't have the weapons around him to be a fantasy machine. I mean, Donovan turns, what, 34 this year? 34 years old? I mean, how many quarterbacks legitimately kept their, I mean, to switch sports and mix my metaphors, how many of them kept their fastball at that age? Well, yeah, and he gets hurt all the time. He's only played in 16 games once the last six seasons. He's handed off to three guys out of Clinton Portis, Larry Johnson, and Willie Parker. <laughs> Clinton Portis is the youngest guy. Clinton Portis might be the least brittle. Yeah, and, and I just don't know. And you know how Shanahan was with Denver mixing and matching running backs. If he's going to with, mix with those three running backs, it's going to lead to a lot of fantasy frustration. And I don't see an, a dominant receiver to go with McNabb there either. Santana Moss is on the downside of his career. Devin Thomas, everybody loves, but I just don't trust him. I mean, from a fantasy perspective, a real-life perspective, there might be a little bit of hope for Redskins fans to see their team make, make the playoffs, sneak in in the back end somehow. Uh, but from a fantasy perspective, see, seeing as all those weapons aren't what Donovan has had previously, I can't imagine that... I, I imagine that he would be the only one that you would say off the top of your head, was probably draftable. And then after that, I'd be very tempted to, to stay away from that if I could. Yeah, that's an offense I'm going to avoid on draft day. And, I, I mean, aside from maybe McNabb as a backup quarterback, I would maybe go for that. And i maybe go for Chris Cooley as a bounce-back tight end. But even he's an injury risk and has Fred Davis in his way. And like I said, with the mess of running backs, the mess of receivers, and playing in this division with all the other big boys, it's going to be tough to trust those players. Opposite end of the spectrum, the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, I again, I have to imagine Tony Romo for something like the third year in a row has to be one of the top five quarterbacks that goes. Oh, and Tony Romo takes a lot of heat for, you know, he, d- he dates the Hollywood starlets. He's kind of a pretty boy. Not everybody's sold on him. Wouldn't everybody want to be that, though? Yeah, I mean, he's got the life. And... He is a excellent fantasy football quarterback because he's probably not going to go in the top five. He may fall to that 6-7 range where him and Matt Schaub are drafted, and at that point he becomes an excellent value in the third round. Well, what, let's talk about the receivers because there's a little bit of upheaval now. No, uh, Des Bryant had, his, had a high ankle sprain. He's going to be missing some time. I'm not sure what the, new, what the latest news was, if he would miss any regular season time, but I'm pretty sure that he's going to be missing at least one preseason game. Yeah, and it's crazy that Des Bryant's getting all the headlines. People are acting like he's going to be the next Randy Moss as a rookie. And let me tell you right now, David, it's not even close. Randy Moss was a once-in-a-lifetime rookie that we may never see again, and Des Bryant is not that guy. And I think the injury to his ankle maybe will calm owners down, and that's a good thing. I- I seem to recall there's a, there's a fairly well-known stat that's circulating out there. You should probably Google it. I probably should have pulled it up before this. But it's something like the two best rookie seasons ever from a fantasy perspective were Randy Moss and Marcus Tolston. And Randy Moss, everyone kind of knew that it was a possibility. Marcus Tolston, nobody saw it coming. And then everyone else, no matter how hyped the guy was, he was at best a pretty okay fantasy wide receiver. You should never be depending on these guys, a rookie wide receiver, to be like your stalwart at receiver. And if you're going to depend on a Dallas receiver, go with Miles Austin or Jason Witten. Miles Austin came to us last year, kind of the pickup of the year, monster game against Kansas City, and never really slowed down, and I like his value. Jason Witten kind of down last year because he only had two touchdowns, but again, I think he's a good, solid value pick at tight end. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles are a team that I'm having a really hard time getting. Aging. Uh, first of all, I really don't like Kevin Kolb. I think that a lot of the hype around him, it, at least it feels to me, is based on secondhand scouting reports of his practices. I mean, he's had two, I believe, two starts last year that went pretty well. Uh, he threw over 300 yards in one of those games, as I recall. Uh, 
what, where do you see Kolb coming down in the in the hierarchy of NFL quarterbacks, fantasy wise? And then after that, the other guys on, on Philadelphia. Well, I think Kolb is an interesting case because all of the headlines in Philadelphia have been about the backup quarterback with Michael Vick. So he's kind of flown under the radar and avoided some of the you know your McNabb's uh, successor stories. I think he's going to be a decent fantasy backup, but I think, like you said, owners need to temper their expectations a bit. They're expecting him, from a fantasy standpoint, to be the next Aaron Rodgers. I think that would be a best-case scenario in Philadelphia. I know Andy Reid loves to throw every play. I know he does, doesn't know what a running play is. And Colt certainly has weapons with Selleck, Jackson, and Macklin in the passing game. But there will be inconsistent games. There will be games where he throws too many interceptions and maybe disappoints owners. So just treat him as a fantasy backup and go from there. So the final team in the NFC East are those New York football giants. Eli Manning, as in real life, uh, I believe the polarization has kind of faded away as, as, it, as his Super Bowl victory has faded into the distance. People are much more comfortable with thinking of him as one of those second, third tier, depending on how you tier the quarterbacks. Uh, type guys. And the same thing is true in fantasy. But I think that there's some dynamic guys there that have that still have a ton of potential. The Jacobs Bradshaw pairing among all those pair among all those timeshares is one of those things that I think can be fruitful with both guys. And and that's what the Giants are about. They need to get back to running the football. They rank seventeenth in rushing offense last season, which was by far the worst season they've had under Tom Coughlin. Brandon Jacobs and Ahmad Bradshaw, if they both stay healthy and they get back to they don't have the fire in the earth, wind and fire anymore, but they still have <laughs> the two running backs that can be, you know, very effective and be excellent fantasy bounce back candidates. And if you look at Steve Smith, another great value pick. I mean we confuse him with Steve Smith that plays down here in Carolina, but Steve Smith for the Giants is an excellent PPR play, solid first round player first receiver material in that format. And Eli Manning, again, excellent value. So the Giants have to get back to running the football first, and if that happens and you see that early in the season, they should be in good shape. Where do you see their second and third receivers, the Giants' second and third receivers, Hakeem Nitz and Mario Manningham going? Because uh, Nix had a lot of support, has a lot of support inside that organization. He's a huge guy. I think he's something like six foot six. And Manningham had a great beginning to the season last year. And I, as I recall, he tailed off at the end. But I mean, if if he's a streaky guy, so be it. I mean, you get that. You, if you catch lightning in a bottle, that's what you want in head dead leagues. Right. And these both of these guys are battling injuries right now. I mean, Hakeem Nix injured his knee, and Mario Manningham's nursing a groin injury. And what these two bring to the table is the same skill set. They both were excellent deep threats in college, and it's translated into the pros. I think Nix can be a breakout receiver, maybe a wide receiver two or three. If he can stay healthy, if you looked at his stats last year, he averaged a bunch of yards per catch, and he's a great deep threat, big, like you said, big body. And Manningham, kind of the same area, but this is kind of a put-up year for him because he's battled injuries the first two years. Well, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Thanks for having me.